All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We'll get started here with Coach Cook. To start it off, I'll be taking a question from Kevin Suits. Um, he wants to know, how have the limited uh, crowds affected your team's performance this season, and how do the tense late match moments feel compared to previous seasons with nobody in the building? Uh, there's definitely a void, and I'm I'm starting to wonder. You know, we we haven't started off slow on the road like we have at home, and I'm just wondering if it's such a letdown not having the crowd that's it's affected our our energy and our starts. So we're gonna try to address that a little bit. Um, you know, I don't think there's any magic formula for it, but it does. It just it just feels empty, and there is something definitely missing, but. That's not an excuse. It's just a reality, and uh, um, and end game. You know, I was actually sitting there in game five, like, okay, if we had eight thousand people in here, how, how fun would this be? And it's still it's still fun, but uh, you know, I, I feel bad for the fans missing out on a great five game match that comes right down to the wire. So uh, it's definitely definitely a uh, big void. All right, we'll take questions for Coach. How are you going about addressing that? I don't know. I just thought of it, actually. I was thinking about it last night and this morning uh, um, that, you know, so I don't know. Probably, I'm going to talk to the team about it. And, uh, you know, we can't use that as an excuse. But, I mean, I, I just feel it. You're just, you know, these guys are so wired. When you walk out, there's 8,000 people. It's electric. And, you know, we're just used to playing in that. And that's been one of our struggles when we go on the road and there is no fans. Uh, you know, it's not very many places in the Big Ten, but sometimes in non-conference you're playing in front of nobody in some tournament or something. And I, I've seen our players have a hard time getting up for that. And so it, it's just part of the deal. You know, there's, there's a plus and a minus to playing in front of big crowds. The other change this week is the change of schedule with the Wednesday, Saturday. How is that? How are you all training the routine to adapt to the home and home series this week? Well, we're used to it in the Big Ten because we play several Wednesday, Saturday matches. So for us, it's good. I actually think it, the, the change of routine will be good. I think it's good we get to play right away after Saturday night's loss instead of waiting all week. So I think the players are going to be really excited to play and try to try to uh, you know be better than we were Saturday and they get an opportunity tomorrow as opposed to wait until Friday so uh, so I think it's real positive this week does it feel like a little bit of return to normal from where the schedule was last year as opposed to the double header weekends a, a little bit uh, I mean I just keep thinking we should be in Hawaii right now you know, it was, a, it was a year ago when this pandemic thing hit. You know, we were we were one day out from getting on a plane to go to Hawaii. So <laughs> that's what I keep thinking about. John, with that with that right side hitter spot, is there any reason that they shouldn't be hitting, you know, closer to 200 with, is it, I mean, is there something with the sets or is there something with a lot of out of system or anything, anything that we can't see, I guess? Uh, nope. There's there's really no rhyme or reason. It's uh, you know, like I've said before, it's like you're fine tuning a race car, and right now it's you know we're not running on all cylinders out there. So we got to overhaul the engine. We got to retune it. We got to you know keep working at it. Uh, get somebody with confidence going over there. Um, so uh, it's the only way I know how to do it. So we let you know yesterday in practice we had a major competition between Jazz and Riley and let them go at it and I think there was you know trying to force them to you know somebody to step up and compete uh, get in the compete mindset as opposed to worried about if I make a mistake or you know I'm not playing very well or whatever so that's kind of how we're approaching it. I mean Riley with early in the season Riley was hitting like 250 260 what uh what was leading to that success that she needs to get back to now? Uh, you know, if I had the answers to all those questions, we, we'd be writing books and doing webinars and, and uh, making good money. So it's just always a process, you know. It's, 
Um, you know, I, I don't have any explanations for that. As, as I know is those guys come in and work really hard. They're working to get better. They've been spending extra time, and, and we got to get it going. Any other questions for Coach? Obviously, <clears throat> sorry. Obviously, passing uh, serve receivers always one of your big keys, but it seems like that's one thing that Iowa does pretty well is they're aggressive with their serves and their their ace numbers are pretty similar to yours. Um, how ready do you have to be this uh, this weekend in particular to take on that challenge? The Big Ten serves tough, and uh, we train to play against the best servers, and we do it every day. And uh, it, it, again, it's something else. It's mental. We got to go in there and have confidence, but. Yes, Iowa is a very good serving and passing team, and um, so it's Big Ten, baby. You got you to bring it. We got to do the same to them, and you know it's it's just like a tug of war going back and forth. Who can serve who tougher, and who can pass better? After uh, after Friday's match, you said that Lauren did a lot of the talking uh, after the second set. Do you like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She has free reign. You know, she's she's a captain of this team. That's part of her role and, and what was expected of her. Why do, you, why do you think a player voice can be effective, I guess, in some situations other than a coach's voice? She's talking to him all the time, whether we're in a match or not. I mean, she's talking to him in practice, in the locker room. You know, there's – captains have a major role in our team and, and what's communicated and how it's communicated and the mindset. And uh, so that's not just something that – flips a switch on in a, you know, in a, in a match on a Friday night. This is, this 24 seven has been going on all year. I know we got a few more weeks of the, uh, of the season left, but postseason is looming large and the RPI has come out and it just looks like an absolute mess. I mean, Nebraska links 53rd, Wisconsin 70th, Fairfield, Sacred Heart are the top two teams. How, I mean, I know that's been a tool that the selection committee has used in the past. Is that a point of discussion amongst coaches of how off it seems this year? I haven't talked to anybody about it. I don't think anybody's paying attention to it um, because uh, the committee knows, well, I think they do know that this is going to be total. They have to, you know, look at the best teams, who they've played, and, and make those decisions and not use – a, a messed up RPI because um, it's uh, yeah that makes no sense. Any final questions? What was the mood in practice yesterday after kind of coming off a that, that Saturday night, night loss? Uh, I think the mood was uh, uh, really good. They went really hard. Uh, we went uh, typically because of the schedule this week. We go. We went a little longer than we typically go on Mondays, and you know I don't think they want to practice to end, end, end yesterday. I think they were having a good time and competing really hard and doing really well. So it was it was a good response by our team. I was really really pleased. Did any of the players say anything? We talked you heard about Lauren on Friday Saturday. Did anybody kind of speak up and and talk to him about that urgency? What you said was lacking on Saturday night. Uh, I I you know. I'm sure there was stuff said. I wasn't in the locker room, and I'm sure there are conversations going on. Um, so uh, these guys are smart, you know. I, I have them like with the outsides. They sent me video reports of the weekend. I mean, they're they're so dialed in. They're so on top of things. They know what needs to be done. They see see things really well, and um, you know, this, this group wants to be great. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you, everybody. Okay, guys, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you.